Good morning, and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 133 on August, that would be 25th, 2020. All these numbers are getting a little hard to keep track of. And before I check my coffee this morning, I want to see how um, daylight is sounding. I understand we had some significant uh, Rice Krispies um, yesterday, some significant uh, popping going on. And so I'm going to try to see if I can hear. No, I don't know if I get the volume. Why can't I hear it? I'm going to try to see if I can hear. No, I don't know if I get the volume. There I am. How fun is that? <laughs> Why can't I hear it? I hear no static. Yay! <laughs> it's a big win for Daylight with Dean today. Now, some of you are like, will you quit giggling and please drink your coffee? So let's enjoy. Uh, this is my first sip of coffee in the morning. Let's enjoy this together. And enjoy it, I did. Wow. Uh, great to be with you this morning on this Tuesday morning. I'm so grateful to have another morning. Uh, just grateful to have another morning. Um, I hope that you had a great day yesterday. Uh, it was... It was... Uh, my Monday, which is typically my day off, but it was a mixture of, of days off and work and still trying to, trying to get to where I take my entire Monday off. But um, ministry, you know, the, the, the fascinating thing about ministry and the thing that I'm most grateful for about ministry is you can plan ministry. You really can. You can plan, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. But uh, the Lord, he, he likes to interrupt. <laughs> his, his timetable, his plans, his, uh, they're all perfect for him on his schedule. But sometimes they feel like just significant interruptions. And for me, that is a, it, it's kind of like a gauge or like a little um, light that goes off to let me know when it's real ministry <laughs> because it <laughs> feels like an interruption. And um, so I hope that today you embrace the interruptions that the Lord brings your way and you look for how you can minister and bless and help through those. Um, I... I had a story I meant to tell um, that I can't, I can't remember if I told it on here two weeks ago or not. So if I, if I told this story, uh, if I could have an umbrella of grace because it's uh, 6 a.m. and I'll tell it again. But um, two weeks ago at the river, uh, one of our worship team members just kind of off the cuff said, uh, we're almost all set up at our new house we moved into, um, but I, uh, we really strained ourselves moving furniture around, and the only thing we can't get is our large dining room hutch, and it's enormous. Is there any chance you can come over and help us move it? Um, any chance you can come over and help us move it today? And I... I laughed. I laughed. I said, well, I'm already set up to go move a friend's hutch at 6 p.m. tonight. So I'll be in the hutch moving mood. Uh, so I would be happy to. 
And I, I told her again when I was leaving, I said, I'm not sure. I got some stuff right after church. I'm not quite sure of my timing of it all, but it will be before 6 o'clock if I can. But I think I can do it. So uh, Leslie and I kind of wrapped up what we had going on around 4.30. And, and I said, do I have a window to run over there? And she goes, you have to be at the other place at 6. I said, I can. So I went to my friend's house. And it's, it's a big house. And I don't know kind of my way around which door to go in. Do I go in through the garage? Do I go through the back door? Do I go through the front door? It all was kind of um, three significant options I could choose. So I chose to go to the back door. So I knocked on the door and really nothing happened. So I decided, I'll just go ahead and, you know. So I walked in and said hello. Well, I walked into the laundry room where no one is. And then there's a kind of a mud room and then a room into the kitchen area. And I'm like, well, I should be okay. So I, uh, they know I'm coming, right? So I knocked on the door going into the kitchen area. And didn't wait for anybody to come answer it. I just cracked the door open, said hello, and started to walk in. <laughs> you know Julia Roberts in the movie The Pretty Woman, when the ladies on Rodeo Drive would not let her shop there because she was dressed in her um, in her street clothes, and so. The next day, Richard Gere took off work to take her shopping. And uh, when she was done shopping, she had all these bags of all this, you know, gazillion dollar expensive clothing. And she walks into the store she was shunned from the day before. And she was uh, all dressed, you know, decked out and looking beautiful. And um, she walked into the store with all the bags of uh, clothes she bought. She said, oh, hi. They're like, well, hello, how are you? And she said, do you remember yesterday when I came in and, and you wouldn't help me? And I'm like, no, no, we don't, we don't really remember. She goes, well, I got one thing to say to you. Big mistake. He, she said, you work on commission, don't you? And said, yeah, yeah. She goes, big mistake. Big mistake. So uh, I thought of that when I opened the kitchen door and stuck my head in and said hello and started to walk in when their 160 to 170 pound Newfoundland named Delilah started running towards me, not happy that this strange man was walking into their house, running toward me, barking and in attack mode. <laughs> The husband looked at me and said, you better close the door. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that was quite a uh, exciting moment two weeks ago. So uh, they put the dog in uh, the bathroom, I think, and then the husband and I lift, lifted and carried the hutch around the house inside the, uh, from inside the garage to inside the dining room. And fortunately... We, um, we, uh, it was in two pieces, so we were able to get it. It was a little narrow going around the table, and my husband had this brilliant idea. Why don't we just slide the table over? <laughs> so we were in the dining room, slid the dining room table to the side, slid the chairs to the side, and carried the hutch straight through, except for the chandelier was right in the middle of the room, so we had to kind of walk around that. But, um, that was that was a, an amusing, uh, blood rushing experience two weeks ago. So, um, hey, wanted to show you um, two books that have come to mean a lot to Leslie over the past years. Um, the first one is just simply called Jesus Calling. It's been on the bestseller list for a long time. It's a it's a year-long devotional and it's just really kind of a short brief snippet but what I appreciate about this devotional is that it is written from the Lord's perspective talking to us so when you read this it's not like you're reading a devotional about the Lord it's as though you're listening or hearing a message from the Lord as you read it. Now, 
Uh, make no mistake about it, this is not inspired words of scripture uh, that have flown from, uh, flowed from the mind and heart and word of the Lord. This is not the equivalent of the Bible, which is God speaking to us and God's word to us. But this is fascinating. When you read it, it, it aligns with scripture. It's not heresy in any way, but when you read it, Hearing this message um, from God's perspective to you uh, is very uh, fresh and very encouraging. And oftentimes when I'm doing a daylight, Leslie will pick up the uh, Jesus calling later and say, oh, well, you were talking about the theme that this hit on and she'll read the whole thing to me. And it's, it's been very helpful and helps her keep her heart engaged and after she uh, made it through this, they had a follow-up. It's written by Sarah Young, and this one is called Jesus Always, and it is kind of the follow-up to Jesus Calling and has been a very helpful uh, friend in time of need and stress and angst, and it really helps uh, focus the day in a direction that is life-giving and good. And so I um, want to just share those with you if you're looking for maybe a devotional, women's devotional. It's a men's devotional too, I guess. But my wife is, oh, it, my wife nodded. Yes, it is a men's devotional as well. Sorry. <laughs> good morning, Leslie. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so um, when I said women's devotional, it's because my wife reads it. Sorry. It's a men's devotional as well. So Jesus Calling and Jesus Always by Sarah Young, two really, uh, really great uh, books today I wanted to share with you. So, oh, <laughs> here you go. Enjoy. <laughs> um, so my sister was in town this past weekend, and we had a delightful visit, and she um, has moved into her new house, and it was not, as I mentioned, the house the first uh, weekend we were out there in June and looked at it wasn't that house that they put an offer in, but it's really crazy how fast houses sell out in her area and how strong the housing market is. Um, so they got a house and moved in, and now they're at the part of unpacking boxes, finding stuff. And she said it's the first time in a long time that they've had all their stuff under one roof with no storage units and all of that. So really excited for her and her husband. And when they came out this weekend, they brought a box of several boxes of stuff that they ran across that uh, were connected with us for somehow, some way. And uh, she had um, this box of and it had a little thing of our wedding photos in it. And I showed these on Facebook about three months ago. But that was our uh, wedding photo after our wedding outside at the First Baptist Church in New Kensington. And uh, the book was just a nice surprise to see uh, all of those pictures. And um, if you were wondering what my mom and dad, if you don't know my parents, uh, I'll try to give you that picture if you can see it. I'm, I'm not sure how this is translating onto um, the live stream, but that's my mother and my father behind us. And um, good days. Um, be 29 years this April. We've been married 28 years so far. So, <sighs> It's a lot of years, holy mackerel. Wow, wow. Well, guys, it was good being with you this morning and glad that my microphone did not have static on it. Uh, just to be clear, I do my microphone the same way every day, so I'm not... <laughs> I have no idea what uh, was different about it this time and why it worked this time compared to last time. Uh, doesn't make sense to me, but uh, glad that we didn't have static today. 
I hope that your day is a smooth day. I hope that this Tuesday um, you find yourself enjoying the day more than you thought could be allowed by law. I hope that you are surrounded by friends and I hope that the Lord reminds you of his faithfulness and love to you this day. Uh, however, if that is not your day and your day is filled with stress, strain, and angst, if you have uh, no joy today, if you find things robbing you of this gift of life throughout the day, if you find situations or circumstances interrupting all the good the Lord has planned for you, I pray that you will take those to the Lord and that you will ask him, what do you want me to learn through this? How do you want me to grow through this? Where do you, where is your faithfulness going to shine through and help me see it? I find when I pray prayers like that, it's much more helpful than when I just say, why me? Why me? Why me? <laughs> and the reason why me, there's, there's just not really good answers to that question. But when you get on the other side of why me and ask, what? What do you have for me in this? How can I grow through this? What do you want me to learn? Uh, for me, often, it's just to trust him. He wants me to trust him. <laughs> and my hope is that when you hit one of those spots, that you will look for God's way out that he is providing for growth, his way through, his way in, <laughs> his way navigating it all so that you may be perfect and complete as the King James describes, <laughs> meaning mature and growing as a follower of his. So it's been really great to be with you guys this morning. And uh, let me close our time together in prayer. Dear Lord, I'm so grateful for each person joining in with us today. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would bless them with your love and your goodness, that you would bless them with your faithfulness. As those blessings are there, but I guess I'm asking that we would see them and that we would notice them. And that we would open our eye, that you would open our eyes to them to see from your perspective. Mm. Father, I pray for my friend Bill, who in two days is having the lower lobe of his lung removed from lung cancer. I pray for his surgery on Thursday, that it will go well and that we'll get a good report. Father, I just ask that you would watch over and bring healing to him. Father, for those of us that have physical things going on in our lives and our bodies that are not health, <laughs> I pray, Lord, that you would bring health. I pray, Lord, that you would bring us through. But even more than that, I pray that we would learn what you have for us to learn during this, through this. And Father, I pray that you would watch over and bless each of my friends here today. May each of us do our day aware of your presence and your love. May we invite you to do our day with us. And Father, we lift all of this up now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great day today. <laughs>